Welcome back to Aisha's Academy and today's video is on completing the square so let's get right into it. Okay so when it comes to completing the square it's basically where um, it involves quadratic formulas and we basically rewrite them in the special equation. Um, so this is our quadratic formula format x squared plus px plus q but sometimes you may see it as written as ax squared plus bx plus c and in completing the squared this is the format we write it in. So we write it in where we have inner bracket x plus a closure bracket squared plus b. And I'm going to go through an example with you guys just so you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> So if we look at example one, so it says, if a question says, solve the equation 4x squared minus 16x plus 15 is equal to zero um, by completing the square, the first thing that I would do is rewrite the quadratic formula. So that's our 4x squared minus 16x plus 15. Then what we will need to do is that we need to actually divide the whole equation by 4. And the reason why is because if you look at the completing the square format at the top in blue, notice how there's no value next to x inside the brackets. So you, if you ever have a constant in front of your x squared, you want to divide the whole um, quadratic formula by that number. And so this would leave us with x squared minus 4x plus 15 over 4. And again, I've left it as a fraction because it's easier to deal with than dealing with decimals. Then we have a formula to work out our value of a, and a way of doing that is if you work out half of your p-value. So in this question, our p-value is minus four, and half of minus four would be minus two. So now, how we're we going, how we are going to rewrite all of this is we're still going to have our four outside of the brackets, but we're going to have another bracket inside our completing the square bracket, and it's going to have x minus two close bracket squared. So we've worked out a, we've done half of it now. Then you're still going to have your 15 over 4 added on the outside, but now we're going to add a new addition onto this formula, and that is minus our value of a squared. So our value of a in this question was minus 2. So we're basically going to do all of that minus minus 2 squared. And to not get confused with the negatives, I normally like to put brackets around the a value, just to prevent error. And I also have another formula for working out our B value to make life easier, which is our B value could be worked out by doing Q minus A squared, which essentially we're doing. So now all of this now is going to simplify into our 4, and then still have the big brackets round, and we still have our little brackets with our X minus 2 squared. Then our 15 over 4 take away our minus 2 squared is going to leave us with an answer of minus 1 over 4. And then the last bit of this question is, is that we need to multiply everything inside the big brackets by 4. And by doing that, that's going to leave us with our 4 brackets x minus 2 squared and then on the outside, rather than having minus a quarter, it's going to be minus a quarter times four, which is minus one. So you're going to have minus one on the outside, and that is your final answer. So let's crack on with some practice exam questions. Example one. In this question, it's given us a quadratic formula and it basically wants us to work out the a and b values. So the first thing that we're going to do is write out our p and q. So always make note of whatever your p and q is in the question. So in this case, our p value is minus 8 and our q is 21. But when we're now going to work out a, which the formula for a again is half times p, we're not going to do a half times minus 8, we're going to do a half times positive 8. And the reason why is because in this completing the square, it doesn't have x plus a. In the brackets it has x minus a so the two negatives will cancel out to make a positive so if we do a half times eight that would leave us with an answer of a being see if you can work it out before it comes up on the screen a would be an answer of four and if you work that out well done so now we're going to work out our b value and again the formula for working out what b is is q take away a squared so q value of 21 minus our a squared, which would be minus 4 squared. And that's going to leave us with an answer of, again, see if you can work out before it comes up, b being 5. 
So now the second part of the question wants us to write down the coordinates of the minimum point. And one thing I want you to know is when it comes to you completing the square, your A and your B values are basically your X and your Y. And they are equivalent to the turning point. So your A and your B from completing the square is basically your coordinates of your turning point, aka your minimum or maximum point of the quadratic curve. And so in this case, our turning point, our minimum point is going to be 4, 5. And that's literally it. Example 2. So in this scenario, we basically need to convert the quadratic formula and leave it in the format of a plus or minus root b. And so the only way we're going to do that, we've got square roots involved, we're going to have completing the square. So we're going to work out our a value, which is half of p. So in this scenario, our p value is minus 6. So it's going to be a half times minus 6. In this case, it's times negative 6 because it doesn't mention how in the brackets our x is x minus a. It doesn't say that. And so that's why we're doing a half times minus 6. So our a value will be minus 3. Then our b value, remember we work it out by doing q minus a squared. So our q value in this scenario is minus 8. Take that away from negative 3 squared. Again, put a bracket around negative 3 so you don't get confused with the negatives. And that's going to leave us with an answer of, again, see if you can work it out before it comes up, b being equal to minus 17. Then we're going to write in the complete and square format. So that's going to be our x minus 3, since our minus 3 is our a value. Close the bracket and square all of that. And minus 17 on the outside. Then, remember, this is all equal to zero. So now you're going to be using your general knowledge of algebraic, like, rearranging formulas. So the first thing I would do is um, add 17 to both sides, a.k.a. move minus 17 over. That will become positive 17. So our x minus 3 squared is going to be equal to 17. Then you want to square root 17, so square root both sides. And that would leave you with x minus 3 being equal to root 17. But one thing I want you to note is whenever you work a square root of a value, you always get the positive and the negative, which is good that we now know that because it's looking more like the format in, that they want in this question. And then the last bit is for x, you want to add 3 to both sides. So it's going to be 3 plus minus root 17. And then example 3. So in this question, it basically wants us to rewrite the quadratic function into completing the square. So we're going to work our a, which is half of p. So our p value in this question is 8, so a half times 8 would leave you with an answer of 4. Then our b is going to be our q minus a squared, so our q is minus 9. Take that away from our a squared, which is minus 4 squared. Again, put the bracket around so you don't get confused with the positive and negatives. And that's going to give us a B value of minus 25. And then literally just write it in your complete and square format, which is going to be X plus 4, close your bracket, squared, minus 25. You don't have to, if you... If you don't work out an A and you're working out, then it's not by force to put a number outside the bracket. So that's it. And then for the next part of the question, it wants us to write down the coordinates of the minimum point. So remember, our minimum point is our A and our B. Our A being the X value, our B being the Y value. So simply, our A is 4 in this question. So it's just going to be 4. And our B value is minus 25. And that's literally it, guys. So minus 25.